Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Haskell Uncut. Today we're going to have a look at the next next Ruby quiz, number 7, and I actually have no idea how I'm going to implement this one. Uh, I'm a bit stumped by it, to be honest, but all the more fun for you to watch, I guess. So, the task is here on the right. The task is you get it's from a quiz show and you get a number uh, you get a set of numbers and a target number and your task should you choose to accept it is to um, use the set of numbers that you're given and um, use arith uh, arithmetic operators like multiply divide plus and minus to reach the target number and now we're going to now I'm going to uh, imp try to implement this in his call. There's a pretty good chance that I'm going to fail um, but I'll put it up on the internet anyway because what better thing to learn from than somebody else's failure. Okay so if we go into pseudocode then what we want to have is a function that we give uh, a set of numbers, a target number, and it returns a formula. Okay, so let's put this, up, put this way. So a set of numbers, that's easy, a target also even easier but we can already see that the formula bit might not be so straightforward so I have an idea how I could reach the right number but that doesn't that doesn't really allow me to see after the fact what the formula was so I think what I need here is a data type term um, uh, where I that I use to evaluate uh, terms, which I can even print at the end. So we have the plus minus So we have the four operators and of course we will need a number at some point. Okay, this is already going far into data type land. Um, so what we're saying is a term can consist of uh, those four operators plus minus multiply and divide or a term can be a number. Of course here we can see that that we also have brackets and it seems that I haven't included the brackets in my in my data type but actually there's always brackets, uh, implied brackets um, that we have. So what we're building here is a tree and the tree always has implied brackets. So let's I'll give you an example of that. Um, so let's say that we have a tree that says plus let me actually do it the other way around malt plus Okay, so what this translates to is 4 times 5 plus 7. So, um, and we can also do it the other way around. So, the, I don't need to put the, 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 the braces into my data type because they're already implied by the tree structure. Of course, this depends how I, I'm going to do the evaluation but we'll get to that word that one later 
So, um, now the question is how how now we can represent the formula, but how can we how can we get on with things here? Um, my idea would be to say generate all possible terms. filter for correct ones. So the idea is to generate all possible terms and then to take out all the incorrect ones. I think this should work um, and what could be the case is that this is a couple of orders of magnitude too slow but I still love to impl implement it because I think the best thing you can have is an easy to understand slow solution as a starting point to optimize. So let's have a look how we how we might do this. Let's just uh, take the numbers here from the right. So just to play with, I'll put them here. So there we have our numbers. They are of type float. Why am I using float? Because just down here it says that it has to be um, that we can't use integer division, so um, we need some kind of fractional. So I could use double or float or anything like that. Actually, yeah, that's a problem. So float is not a good idea because I'm gonna have rounding errors. So let's see. What um, I think the Haskell number types. Let's see what number type I want to use here. So I want proper fractions. Um, let's see if I can find which k, which one that is. Rational. I'm not sure. Let me just. Okay, so I'm going to use rational here. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is to generate the terms. Now, to be honest, I have actually given this some thought prior, previously, because I just had no clue. And I haven't fully figured it out, but I think I have a good idea how I would do this. So, what I want here is to generate all terms. The problem is, that um, even though I have a limited amount of numbers, because I would construct terms of the form something plus something, um, what I was going to say was that yeah, so that means that I'm going to use the, the plus here and then generate the something. And the, sum, the, the something could again look like this. And then I expand this and it could be like this. So this could be an infinite regress. 
basically there's an infinite number of terms even though it's limited by the, the numbers that I actually fill in. How I'm planning to go around this is by generating the terms in increasing order of length or of complexity. All of this sounds incredibly complicated, infinite lists, the typical Haskell phenomenon, but it's actually, I think it's actually easier than it sounds. So, the shortest term that I can generate is uh, one of the numbers. So, let's do that. That's that. And then I want to um, I want to append to that uh, more complex terms. So, how do I do that? I go into the just so now I go into the um, into the list monad and I say look I want I want a term a left term and a right term and I want to have an operator so um, let's let's do that I want the right term. I want an operator. And I'm going to return the operator applied to left and right. Okay. This is, uh, we're quite deep into Haskell territory, so I'll just do a short, a short excursion. Let me just check if this compiles. Okay, let me just give you a simpler um, example to show. So here we have a simple example. It says, for x pick one of the numbers 1 through 3, for y pick one of the numbers 4 through 6, and then return the, the tuple x and y. And because we're in the list monad, it is going to, s to collect all those tuples and give us a list of all the possible tuples with this combination. So if we go here into GHCI and I run tests, it should gives me all the possible combinations of tuples. That's the list monad. Many many different ways to write this. Um, an alternative way to write this would be as a list comprehension. Let's see if this works. And it gives exactly the same solution. So that's basically what we're doing here. So what I'm saying is I want to have the list of all numbers and then I want to have the list of all terms. And I'm going to say a term is an operator applied to left and right. Left is a term Right is a term, operator is one of these four, and go. So, what's going to happen here is that we jump into generate terms, and first it's going to give me the numbers. Here, too, first it's going to give me the numbers. And then comes the plus plus, and then, we'll, then it will give me the terms. So, this will actually, for, for two reasons, this will give me an infinite list. Um, but it's an, it's an increasing order of, of, of length and complexity. 
I'm not I'm not uh, using up the numbers as was the, so I can I can't use the same number twice um, so I don't have to use all numbers but I can't use the same number twice so I'm not I haven't implemented that yet but let's just give this a run actually I'm gonna use less um, Just less numbers as to reduce the, the length of the output. Okay, so let's see. Take 20 generate terms. Okay, let's set this to end just for now. Okay, so here it gives me. First, it gives me the three numbers 1, 2 and 3. Then it gives me plus 1 and 1, minus 1 and 1, multiply 1 and 1, divide 1 and 1. So this is for 1 and 1 all of the operators. Then it's going to give me the next 4 and so on and so on and so on. And these terms are getting longer and longer. So now it's going through, let me see... Okay, so at this point here we have uh, we have done all of the simple operations. So now it's going to into more complex operations. Ah, oh, I can see tiny problem coming up here. Hmm. Let me just check something really quick. Could be that I never will run through the through these because this is an infinite list. So then I would have to come up with something else. <sighs> I think I will fix this once I use the limited amount of numbers, but um, I just like to understand how this works. Okay. Okay, so this is not generating all the terms because I'm st I'm stuck at tnum one. Okay, but this is still okay because I'm going to have a limited supply of numbers. So the recursion will will stop there. Um okay, and now we need to do one more thing, which is we need to take into account the numbers. Again, there's two choices that I could make. I could use the reader monad or I can pass them around by hand. I'm going to choose passing them around by hand because working with I I, I need to stack the list monad and the reader monad and um, I just loathe the idea of doing that in front of an audience so um, let's do it this way um, okay so I pass it uh, some numbers in And now I need to now what what's going to happen? I'm changing the type of generate terms. I 
it's going to return the remaining numbers plus a term, plus a list of terms. Okay, so here we need to pass the NS and then it's going to give us an updated version. So the numbers minus the ones that have been consumed. So I post, put NS and here it's going to give me another update on that. Okay. Okay, if I'm at this position here, I need to make sure that uh, I need to make sure that there is at least two numbers left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a guard in here. I'm going to say make sure that okay because we need two numbers to to make this work. Simple as pi. Okay, so shall we give this a go and see what what happens? Okay, so what we have here is that I haven't taken into account the whole. removing of, of numbers. So let, let me do that right now. So I'm actually going to write a little helper function for this. Actually, I could use it, I could write a helper function for both. I mean, obvi uh, obviously, working with lists is incredibly slow. So we have one of the worst, uh, worst performing functions here. It's list concatenation. I'm just doing this now to keep things simple, and then I'm going to switch to sequence once this is running. So take a number means I'm going to take one of the numbers, delete it from the from, from the pool and return it. Okay, and then make term is just what we had here. I'm making sure that um, there's at least two numbers left. Generating a term, generating a term, 
choosing an operator and returning the result. Okay. So, because I'm threading through the state manually, there's quite a risk of making a mistake here. One very, very good re reason to use the reader monad. I think this should be correct now. So, let's see if this works. 917. Actually, uh, this is not quite correct. I'm returning a list of terms and the remaining numbers. So, let's see. Wow, well, that worked. Okay, so generate terms. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, so far so good, but it actually crashed. Okay, so it gives me one, three, five, gives me one plus three, one minus three. Okay, because this is really painful to look at. I'm gonna instance show term where show plus a b Okay, let me just um, make an unline of that. Why? Now we're going to map Let's get rid of the, the remaining numbers Okay, so this is what it gives us. I think it looks pretty, pretty looks pretty good to me. 
Now we do a take 40. Okay, so this is what it produces so far. 1, 3, 5, 1 plus 3, minus 3, and so on. Okay, looks pretty good to me so far. The only thing that I'm missing is something other than 1 in the first position. So there we still have a now we still have a problem. Okay, so the problem is <sighs> I'm descending further and further. So let's say NS is greater than 2. So it jumps into generate terms, tracks still greater than 2. Jumps into generate terms, still greater than 2. So there we have a problem. The problem is that we are going deeper and deeper into recursion, even though we have we don't have enough um, operators to work with. So um, I'm I, I need to take that into account. So I have. Let me just think for a while. Here. So I need to, before I recurse, I need to check that I have enough operators to fulfill this. How, how would I do this? So before I call this, I need to make sure that I have enough, that I have enough numbers left to, to even go in there, because otherwise, um, So this doesn't work. You can always take a number. That's perfectly fine. The problem is make term. Here we need to check what's going on. How how am I going to how am I going to do this? I could log the recursion depth, but that that would be an evil solution.
let's have a look at those solutions again. So, he has used up everything. He took a number and now he's right recursing. So here he took the first possible value, which is 1. And here he's going through all the possible combinations of 3 and 5. So he's exhausting this. No, that's not true. He has already exhausted that, and he has he's now exhausting left take number, right take number. And when he has exhausted that, he goes to make term. It creates a completely new term. So the take number case, that's easy. If 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 I have an empty list here, that shouldn't do anything. Ah. So here already we have a problem. Because he jumps into the make term. If we take this out, then this terminates. But instead he goes in here, generates a term. These won't work, so he goes into a make term. And then he's in here, this won't work, so he goes in here. So that's actually the problem that we have. Okay, I don't really have a better idea at the moment than to pass in the length of numbers. And whenever we call make term, call this with L minus 2. not a beautiful solution, but it will do for now. So what I'm saying is I'm passing in the length of the list and the list and then oh, I use this. So if the list is empty then this fails, I get the empty list back. Then I go into here. At first the list has, let's say, six elements, so this one's fine. And this one calls well, or I don't know, at least with minus one. when this is, must at least be a take number. Yeah, I'm not very happy with this solution. 
Let's see if it works. So I still have to have the empty list. <sighs> okay, that okay, I need to pass in so empty list. That works. Let's take my original numbers again. So what's the issue here? So how long is this? Okay, fantastic. So, I think this should be all the terms that I can build with three numbers. Okay, so the idea of this is to generate all possible terms. Okay, so now I have a couple of challenges. Oh, some things to. So I've, I've ticked this one generate all possible terms. But what I haven't ticked yet is that I need to evaluate my terms because I've chosen a data type here. Um, it's not really an equation, so I need to evaluate. Okay. So evaluate T num A. Okay, why is there no division? Maybe it's diff. Okay, 
So let us evaluate. Okay, I'm saying multiply four times in braces. 3 plus 2. So this is 5 multiplied by 4 is 20. Okay, fantastic. And now comes the moment of truth. Now we will see how horribly slow my solution is. Okay, so I generate the numbers and now I filter my predicate and I take Run the numbers, and the predicate is that I get a term generate all terms, and I filter by that the evaluation of T is equal to the target and let's see what happens now. So generate terms is a list of tuples. Ah yeah, sure. So numbers and the target is five two two. Divide by zero. Hmm. Very good. So I can't divide by zero. So I'm saying guard. So I'm saying make sure that we don't divide by zero. Actually probably this is the wrong place to do this. So let's just move all of this. And I'll actually put that into eval. I do that. Oh, 
I'll have Eva return maybe. Okay. So now I say evas of type maybe on type. Okay, because now those are maybe values, I can't just add them. So one thing comes, one thing leads to the other. Okay, my goal had been to do this really fast. Obviously, that's not happening. And I still have the good chance that the whole thing will be too slow and that I need to do something entirely different. question is, where is the problem here? The one thing I wanted to check was um, how many terms are actually being produced at the moment. Um, let me just see. Generate terms. a lot. Okay. Okay, so now um let me just see if I can test this somehow. So I wanna check how to get with
so but already here we can see that there's a lot of things that I don't need to do um, so what I'm actually going to change is this make term um, I'm gonna change that one. I'm going to say pluses minuses modes divs function that one's going to get get arcs I'll just start with the pluses. Oh, I have to do them anyway. So pluses. problem is that my whole approach doesn't really work. Let's see. Let's let's see how this goes. I'm really annoyed that it has taken me so long, but this is how it goes at least for me I mean probably there's some other people who can work this out in just no time at all but not me now we can actually undo this whole thing Problem is, I might be evaluating things multiple times now, but we'll just see what that. So, we're going to say guard left, uh, evil left, and evil right. It's not zero. Because 0 plus x and x plus 0, they're not helpful. Here we're gonna say guard evil right is not 0. Here we're gonna say We don't want to we don't want to multiply by one. We don't want to divide by one, we don't want to divide by zero. So 
So now we have to generate turns. Let's see. This is a diff. While it seems expensive to filter these things, to evaluate all these things all the time, um, it actually saves a lot of time because there could be all kinds of things coming behind what we evaluate. Still very long. Okay. Okay, so we don't want to divide by zero, we don't want to divide by one, don't want to multiply by one, don't want to subtract zero, don't want to add zero. Okay, hmm, I think I'll have to tackle this whole issue a little differently. So, what I'm actually going to do is change the way this is evaluated. Um, I'm actually going to um, actually going to add a num type here. Okay, so just to explain what the plan what the plan will be is I will evaluate things from the start. So what that means is that as soon as I construct one of these, it will already be evaluated. That's gonna give me a couple of advantages. The only thing that this means is that I will need that I won't be using the constructors directly, but that I will be using uh, special functions to construct.
so what I'm saying here is <coughs> if I want to construct a plus, so it's a plus a b, and I'm already calculating the value. And for completeness, I'm gonna Okay, so obviously that doesn't help me one little bit yet, but Okay, so that's already working, and now I think we can. We have all kinds of opportunities because now we can say we can have cases. For example, here we can have a case that we have one plus two, and we have two plus one. <coughs> the way we would usually that I would usually solve this is to say that the first parameter has to be has to be greater or equal and the same goes for multiplication that's also symmetric
So it just needs to think really long. Okay. Let's check this one out. Still too many parameters. Okay, what else could I look for? I think I'm going to sort the array. Okay, let's run this with one, two, three. Very smart. Actually we can actually we can say that it needs to be strictly greater. Okay. 
Okay. This is looking much better. Okay, there was a couple of suggestions in the Ruby quiz here. Um, we've we've done this one. Maybe there's something about symmetry that I can do for the divs. But maybe this already helps us. one solution. Let me just see if this works out. I wonder if I have. Ah, I think I set it to int. Not rational, so there were some rounding codes. Okay. Test this. Very cool. Works. Oh. 
Ah, oh, yeah, the problem is that I'm still using both fives interchangeably. <laughs> so I don't really know how to fix that at this point. Um, there's two fives and they get treated fairly by the list monad. Yeah, I guess I guess that's that's okay. Okay. So this has taken long, 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 much longer than I had hoped. Um I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time at Haskell Uncut.